Hi, on this episode, we're going to focus on inpatient stroke care. I'm here with head nurse, Deborah Archer, and ADN, Iman Wahab. Hi, everyone. Hello. So tell me, how long have you been working at the county? I've been here almost 20 years. Wow. Yes, quite a while. Well, I've been at Kings County for almost two and a half years, but I'm not new to the corporation. I've been in the corporation since 2006. I work with the stroke patients along with my right hand, Ms. Deborah Archer, the head nurse for the unit. When did we transition? About almost two years? How it's long? a little over two years, yes. under three years. Yes. yes. So that's how long we've been yes. working with uh, stroke patients. We moved. We moved from the second floor to yeah. the sixth floor. I think that there is something quite spectacular about this transition because mm -hmm. now we have a dedicated floor just for our neurological patients. Right. And from my experience is that it has been a stupendous growth and a great opportunity for the entire facility to benefit to have such a specialized unit. So the majority of the patients that are on the sixth floor are stroke patients. Um, how does your unit prepare for a stroke patient when they're admitted? Okay, um, would you like to take that on? Um, definitely. Well, most of the stroke patients will come from directly from the ER or they may come from the ICU. Yeah. Sometimes they can be transient from another unit. So if they're coming from the ED, it's a typical admission that is coming up and we have to make sure that the unit is prepared, the bedroom, the room is prepared, um, that we have the adequate um, equipment in there, like suction, whatever is necessary. The cardiac monitoring is important because most of them who come up will need cardiac monitoring. Um, the patients that come from the other floor, sometimes they may not need cardiac monitoring, but most of them do. The staff have to be on alert to ensure that they are properly taken care of. And might I mm -hmm. add, because we have the bed board, we're constantly looking at the bed board to see, well, who's coming next? Because when they're assigned a room, we're preparing. If the patient needs cardiac monitoring, then we, you know, we just jump into it. Who do we have to shuffle? We have to decide if it's a male bed or a female bed. So a lot of logistics come into play, speaking with beds are. So a lot goes into um, preparation and communication with the unit that the patient is coming from. I always view whenever we admit patients, you know, from our end, it's very interesting to look at your end. It's more like a symphony of services when you transition a patient from the emergency room for inpatient. And you want to make sure that everyone is prepared for that arrival. And, yes. yeah. and even though it happens around 700 times a, mm -hmm. a year, it, it still goes quite seamlessly. And I, I really have to applaud you on that because of course, I never see it from your perspective. Right, right. There's a lot of work, especially when we have to shuffle patients from bed to bed because we have 12 cardiac monitors on the room and sometimes those other rooms might be occupied. So we have to shift patients out of those rooms to get accommodation in the cardiac monitored rooms. Superman, yes. superwoman, so, superman. Yeah. From housekeeping right up, right yes, down. Everybody's mm -hmm. involved, it's collaborative. Everybody's involved. So what type of stroke patients do you see in your unit? Well, we see the ischemic strokes and as well as the hemorrhagic stroke and we do have the subarachnoid that are stepping down from ICU. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. How do you keep yourselves up to date in the latest stroke treatment and stroke care in the nursing education perspective? First of all, to uh, be working on the stroke unit, um, we require eight hours of stroke education and also two years we have to renew our um, NIH stroke scale. Um, we get information updates from the stroke business meeting, um, the American Heart Association. I mean, as professionals, I believe all of us want to continue engaging in lifelong learning. So there's the internet, there's a wealth of information, there's their journal articles. So that's how we keep ourselves up to date. We have daily huddles, so we ensure that whatever information is gathered from the top fills right down to the bottom, the, the staffing, so they're kept aware. Yeah, you know, there's so much information out there with the newest nursing up-to-date guidelines on taking care of stroke patients that That's came right. from the American Heart. Mm -hmm. It's really commendable how much 
education and reinforcement is provided in your unit. It's astounding. And I have to add, from the perspective of nursing education, our stroke training modules, keep us off yelling. Yes. We have to yes. go in there and do all of our modules, right? Mm -hmm. To keep ourselves abreast, yes. So stroke not only affects strength, it also affects the cognition and the behavior. Um, what are some steps and educational pointers can you give to the patient's loved ones when they come, they experience the aftermath of the stroke? For me, I would say patience is key. And the reason being, you know, when someone suffers a stroke, it's a, it's a traumatic event, it's a significant event. There's yeah. loss of memory, or we would say cognitive and motor function. So now you now as the family or the caregiver, you have to exercise a lot of patience because even six months down the road of um, recovery, there are still limitations that they're experiencing. They might not remember. So you have to, you know, take the ball and grab the bull by the horns and understand that they may not remember. Try to refocus them, try to engage them. You have to assist them and also look into the fact that us as caregivers, we might get tired too. So look into something like caregivers respite because caregivers do get burnt out. In addition, what I would like to say is that the family can use various forms of stimuli, like pet therapy, music, art. They can encourage them so that it would aid in their cognitive development. And the Stroke Center also has a, a program where family members, as well as the patients, they can visit it's every month, once a month and they're able to come there and engage with the um, staff, that will help them a great deal. Yeah, we have a stroke survivor group that is yeah. hosted by one of our program managers, MPs. Every month they present topics, including how to take up blood pressure control, how to redirect uh, patient care and loved ones. And the meeting is online. Every discharge summary in the after visit summary, it, there's a QR code that goes directly to the meeting with dates and times. And it's something that we've been uh, working on to really help alleviate the burnout that you, what you say with our caregivers. Absolutely. And it's a, it's, a, it's a great way to relieve the anxiety, the angst, the frustration mm -hmm. that is included with taking care of a patient who has had a stroke. What are some pointers or tips that you can tell patients and their loved ones when they have a loved one that comes in with a suspected stroke? First of all is um, the pointers. I mean, are you talking pre or post? So let's start with pre. Uh, pre and post, I would say, is maintaining a healthy diet. Um, avoiding these sugary drinks, even maintaining a low sodium diet. A lot of times the patient population that we see, they do not have a primary care physician. Yeah. So I would say the foundation for good and even better health is first getting a primary care physician and then we go from there. I, I would endorse what Ms. Wahab had said um, in terms of pointers to for the family to be able to better manage their patients, um, their family members, and prevent um, stroke. Diet is very important. Education is important. And I find that lots of people are not sufficiently aware of the causes of stroke and how they can prevent it. So that's important for them to know. And how to quickly identify signs of a stroke, that's very important. So um, like we would teach them to be fast. We would give them um, thanks to you, Dr. Law. We have these nice little handouts that they, can, that they can use so the family would be more aware. We call back patients and we also engage in some educations and remind them what are some of the symptoms in case they should have a um, reoccurrence of any stroke. Yeah. Right, and also taking their medications, right? As prescribed. That's very important. They need mm -hmm. to follow that. And you know, we're in the age of modern technology, so everybody's on the computer. So we can give them websites to visit, to educate themselves. We're not asking them to become Google doctors, but to educate yourself and follow up with your primary care physician. Mm -hmm. That's the basis of good health and better foundation for your health as you move forward. Well, thank you for all the service that you do for all of our patients. Now you house majority of our, if not all of our stroke patients as they enter in Kings County. So 
it really warms my heart to see that there's so much care and consideration of these stroke patients. But in addition, you're empowering them. And that yes. is something that is really wonderful too. Thank you so much for your time. Just talking shortly about just a little segment of what you do for all of the stroke patients. Thank you so much. Thank you to you too. And you know what, as the saying goes, no man is an island. And all of us sitting here, including those from housekeeping to dietary, you know, the staff, the nurses, the PCAs, it's collaborative, social work, case management, you know. It takes, it takes a, a team. team.